This is the ball python we're gonna adopt out right here. It's a het clown. Hello. Oh, try that again. You looking at my book? Oh, your book. Welcome to the vlog. Welcome back to the. Ah, I'm talking like a dong dong. I, I'm so. Uh, bah! Ah, speak like a normal person, Brian. You can do it. I do feel like my, my real personality has really been coming out. I mean, there's so many different levels of my personality. My full personality is the one that is probably really annoying to most people after an extended amount of time. Make sure you unsubscribe, turn off your notifications, don't comment down below because that's too good. Actually, make sure you dislike the video because we get way too many likes around here. Yes, we are adopting out a ball python today. I got my little ball python trivia thing. I'm going to go over the questions you guys. Maybe you can help me out with it a little bit. And I was also thinking like, what is the difference between adopting out a ball python versus giving one away? Because people do giveaways and you don't hear so much about adoptions, but I'm, I'm the vice president of our local turtle club, which I don't have a turtle, which is actually gonna change this weekend coming up. Just check it out. It made me think because the, the turtle club does adoptions all the time and I was thinking, what's the difference? What's the difference between an adoption versus a giveaway? I think the difference is in an adoption, you're making sure the animals go into a good home. Or even if you know, you're thinking about adopting a kid, you have to go through a crazy process to make sure that that kid is going to a good home. So I think it's the same with animals. So you have to make sure it's going to a good home to make an adoption. A giveaway, you're just handing an animal, animal over to somebody in a giveaway, just like, here it is, good luck. I think that's the difference. I personally think it would be better for all of us and everybody involved to do adoptions versus giveaways because adoptions mean you're, you're making sure that the animal's going to a good home and not just giving it away to the universe maybe even doing checkups with where the animal went to see how they're doing and give them the option to bring the animal back to you in the case that they find they can't care for it. My buddy Joel talked about this recently on a video. My buddy Joel over at Stay 48 Exotics and Reptiles Unplugged. It was a good video. He had, good, he had some really good points. And I think that's where this comes into play, the, this whole adoption idea. Hillary's leaving for work right now, so I got to get back upstairs real quick and make sure these boys are not going to rip the house apart. And then we'll come back down here, pick out some snakes, and we'll go from there. Hey, Noah. What? What? You know. I know. Helicopters. Helicopters? Yeah. What about helicopters? That they fly and they're different colors and there's some firefighting helicopters and there's some search and rescue helicopters. There's some helicopters for going places. They have wheels and this big blade that goes around and around and around and it might be possible that they close these but not much and that's all i know hey eli what what do you know i know t-rexes Ooh, what about t-rexes that they have a powerful jaw and a powerful bite and two tiny arms and teeth and great vision and a two and that's why I know. You learned that from your brother? Oh, and also chomp! And also pretty chunky, pretty chunky, pretty chunky, pretty chunky, 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 chunky. Here's the trivia questions I came up with. Let me know what you guys think of these. Why are they called ball pythons? What are three differences between snakes and lizards? Where are ball pythons from? What is one major difference between pythons and boas? What are ball pythons called in other parts of the world? What is the scientific name for ball pythons? What do snakes use to smell their surroundings? And what does ectothermic mean? Let's go downstairs and pick out some snakes. Hey, don't bang on the glass, T. Okay. You little dancey girl. I don't remember if I said this or not, I'm speaking tonight at our turtle club. I'm gonna be doing a presentation on ball pythons and talking about ball pythons to everybody, so I, I need to pick out these snakes to bring tonight. T! I'm thinking I wanna pick out some that are a nice representation of ball pythons, like, you know, some a big female, a little male, a baby, probably a, a piebald. Here, let's take a look. You guys get your Freedom Breeder rack with a shelf? Super convenient. I'm thinking we'll bring this big girl right here because she's just a great example of how... <laughs> oh, is that exciting for you, T? She's just a great example of how big a ball python can get. And we'll bring this girl right here, Princess, because 
piebalds are just like for the general public i think are just like the most amazing looking you're super excited about this aren't you just the most amazing looking ball python that stark contrast between the pattern and the black and the white and the, it's just she's just amazing and i think that she'll be a stunner for people to see and then we'll bring carl here he's the first ball python we ever got he's full grown obviously he's a male he's also starting to go into shed which i think will be interesting to be able to show people what it looks like when a snake is starting to go into shed how their eyes get cloudy and their belly gets pink I think that'll be a cool one too, as well as he's got a great story. Actually, no snake has a better story around here as far as ball pythons go than Lucy, our fire clown female here, who is the one that we had to have the egg cut out of. She's doing fantastic, by the way, eating food and just and looking super healthy. And uh, so she's got a great story, so I think I'll bring her. And I think that helps people get emotionally involved with the animals. I think it's good to have that balance of, of teaching people facts, but also getting them emotionally involved to care about the animals. So. I feel like I'll have a good blend of both. And then this is the ball python we're gonna adopt out right here. It's a het clown. What do you think, Eli? Yeah, and he's trying to hide. He's eating me. <laughs> that big I wonder when he's going to grow up. Probably right now. Yeah, because he's getting big. Like this, hands, hands, gentle, gentle. Good. <laughs> Mine is falling up. Have a little bit. <laughs> Brought the kiddos down, cool off a little bit, get out of that Atascadero heat for a minute. The other day when I asked you guys to name me the town slogan for Morro Bay, I got a bunch of answers I wasn't expecting. Now I'm not going to be a jerk, I'm, I still obviously I picked one of you guys to, to give away the Cocoa Blocks to for this last giveaway, but what I was looking for was three stacks and a rock. Because three stacks and a rock, I know you can't see the rock right now, it's shrouded in fog, but that's the town slogan, at least for, for the locals around here, three stacks and a rock. That's the slogan. I, I hadn't heard of all this other like, give your life to nature or dive into nature or let live by the coast. I hadn't heard any of that stuff before. All I know is three stacks and a rock. Apparently the, the online world doesn't recognize the local, the local slogan. <laughs> it's all good. Three stacks and a rock, y'all, don't forget it. Three stacks and a rock. A little bit, go back home, wait for Hillary to get there, and then we're off to the Turtle Club meeting. If you guys could give Hillary oh. some uh, some sympathy vibes or some healing vibes. The strep came back the very next day. The strep came back, thought it was gone, but the strep came back. It, she took all her antibiotics, and then what, what happened? It, the, it's like it's a strain that... Yeah, they're having issues because they're finding that a lot of the strains are becoming um, antibiotic resistant because of like the overuse of antibiotics. So they like mutate and don't work. So now they're giving me one that has penicillin plus like some broad spectrum antibiotics that's stronger. And now I get to be on that for 10 more days. <laughs> All right, when, we, when I get... When I get when I get back from the meeting, I got a bone to pick with you about something though. I got all the animals packed up, ready to go. I didn't tell Hillary where my beef was, but basically she's got she like doesn't understand my new sign off, doesn't understand it, so I'm gonna like explain it to her and see if that helps her understand it, and we'll, we'll see. But got all the animals ready to go. I'm bringing I'm bringing Betsy Ross. I'm bringing the big girl. I'm gonna make it a surprise at the end. It's a, it's supposed to be a presentation on ball pythons. I wanted to have like surprise for everybody there, and so. Got a big snake in there, see how everybody likes it. My name is Brian Cusco. Some of you may know, I'm the vice president of this club. Uh, th I think the only thing that means at this point is that if somebody tries to assassinate Brandon, then I'm next in line. So Brandon, don't die, because I, I don't have time for that. So I'm trying to get over it right now. I'm trying to learn to use my big boy voice, because I, I speak fairly quietly normally. So I'm going to work on that with you guys. You guys are my test. You guys are my guinea pigs for public speaking. So ball pythons, like all reptiles, are ectothermic. That's the new layer of skin being formed underneath before they shed off the old layer of skin. That's the number one job of snakes on planet Earth is to keep the rodent population under control.
Brendan said I did a great job and I'm, I'm ready for my big thing. He's the president, so he knows what he's talking about. Just don't get assassinated. I can't handle the, the pressure of having to step in as VP. I might get. Who knows? Okay. Just don't be the moving. Turtle Club's tough. Everybody's packed up, ready to go home, buckle up for safety. And we're going to confront Hillary about the issue that we're having with my outro. Uh oh. <laughs> Are you learning guitar? My outro. Are you picking a bone with me? Yeah, my Let's outro. My outro, how you, you, you criticize my outro. I don't remember if you remember why I came to that conclusion. It was when I was hurtling down the mountain on my bike and remembering how precious life is and how any of us can go at any moment. But you do have the most reason to criticize it because the main reason I'm ha putting that there is for you guys, basically. If you die? If I move, leave this world. <laughs> That's why I don't like it. I don't need to hear that every time. <laughs> like. All right, stop saying it then. From now on, I'm just gonna say, see you tomorrow. No, you know what? I'm not gonna have catchphrases. Here's the problem with catchphrases anyways. They become a catchphrase and it doesn't become, it becomes inauthentic right off the bat. So you just start saying it again and again. But I can say aloha every day because aloha should be said all day every day to everybody everywhere. You used to say, you used to say take care of yourselves, take care of each other. What's I still put that up in text. I put that up, that, that goes up in text at the end. Oh, what's wrong, Tushi? Oh, you wanna see your daddy gone? Come here, T. Give me a snack. Give me some love. Can I have a kiss, kiss? Okay, you guys are like, why don't I get to adopt the ball python? Why does it have to be the people just at the meeting? Well, guess what? I've had a contest running for you guys to adopt the ball python. Only two people have entered the contest, so the odds right now are pretty dang good. Only two people have entered. All you have to do is go down and get some Triple B merch, post yourself with it somewhere in public. I don't care if it's a coffee mug, a hat, or a shirt, or whatever. Tag me so I see that you went and did it and you're entered in to adopt a ball python right from us and it's even past head sunset so ah, there you go see you later you're supposed to be back inside your enclosure missy don't you know don't you know what's going on here hmm